Today's recipe is called Krautkrapfen, Kraut crawls or sauerkraut rolls here in America. And it's not really an Oktoberfest recipe to be honest, but it fits so much to the topic and it's so delicious. It comes from the Swabian area, but it's also enjoyed in Bavaria. And let's not be petty and just enjoy the good food. Before I go through the ingredients, know that there's a blog post with the printable recipe and you can switch between the metric and the US customary measurements so you can use whatever you're used to. So what you need is flour, some water, butter, caraway seeds, an onion, salt, a clove, bay leaf, some bacon, some oil, sauerkraut and beef broth. For the oil you can just use a neutral oil like sunflower oil, vegetable oil or in my case I'm using safflower oil. I will start with making the dough for the rolls. For that I have the flour here. I'm adding half a teaspoon of salt. I mix this a little bit. And then I leave some space in the center where I put in the water and the oil, five tablespoons. And now I'm using my hands to mix these ingredients together and create a dough. So I've worked on this dough now for about 10 minutes and I had to add a little more water to get a smooth um, dough. It has to be kind of firm but still smooth enough to work with it. You will have to roll it out later. So if it is too firm or doesn't come together, add a little more water. If it is too wet, add a little more flour. So in the end you should have a dough like this that will be able to be rolled out but at the same time is like kind of firm. I will wrap this now and this will have to rest for 30 minutes. It will rest for more than 30 minutes though since I have to prepare the sauerkraut in the meantime. And those who know me already, I try to avoid plastic whenever possible so I'm wrapping this in wax um, cloth and this works very well. Okay, setting this aside. For the sauerkraut, I first have to prepare the bacon and the onion and cut both into smaller pieces. I will now fry the bacon. And after a little bit, I will also add the onions. All right, time to add the sauerkraut. And um, I'm using a German brand here, but you can use any other brand as well. Or you make your own sauerkraut. The recipe for that is here. So I'm just adding this here. Okay. And I'm adding about 200 milliliters of the broth. It's like almost a quarter of this. I'm also adding the bay leaf, the clove and the caraway seeds. 
If you don't like caraway seeds like me, you can leave them out. I'll put them in here today because sometimes it's just better for digestion. I'll mix this in very nicely. And now this will have to cook for at least 30 minutes. You can also let it cook for an hour. By the way, I used to dislike sauerkraut when I was younger. My mom didn't know how to make it. She would just open the jar, put it into a pot and heat it. And she'd never really cooked it for an extended time. And that was her mistake. She didn't know that she has to cook it for at least half an hour or even better for an hour. It makes much more sense and tastes much better if you really cook it. At the end of the cooking time, most of the liquid has already evaporated. There's still a little left though. And I want this um, sauerkraut to be as dry as possible. So first of all, I want to remove the bay leaf. And once I find the club, I will remove that one too. But for now, I'll just put this into a sieve and I'm gonna catch the remaining liquid. I'm pressing out some of the liquid. You can see here how much is still left. And the sauerkraut now goes into this bowl in order to cool. So I want to cool it as much as possible before I put it into the dough. The dough has rested and I'm cutting it into halves now. And I will roll out each half into a rectangular shape. Okay, and you want this to be rather thin. So I could basically see my hands somewhat through this dough. So the sauerkraut has cooled and I will use about half of it on the first half of the dough. Spread this out. And I leave a gap on the top here. That's why I want to close it later. So I'm now starting to wrap this from the long side and carefully pull this in, making sure that it's not too loose. So when I come to the end, I'm adding a little bit of water. So I can close this. All right. So and the end pieces are always a little bit troubling. So I sometimes just take some of the sauerkraut and just stuff it in here. like this. Okay, and now the second one. I'm already preheating the oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit or 180 degrees Celsius. I'm using the convection oven today. If you don't have a convection oven, use 200 degrees Celsius or 400 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm now preparing the casserole and I'm putting some butter in here so it will be easier to get these out later. And now I'm cutting these um, rolls into slices of about one and a half inch or three centimeters. So I have a measure here. So this is three centimeters. The first slice of course is always a little bit off. Anyways, I'm not gonna waste it. So you can 
into the second one. And I'll just use this to measure the next one. And so on. So this is what it looks like when you cut all rolls into these slices and put them into the, the casserole. And I'm now using the um, liquid that I had from the sauerkraut before. And I'm putting it in here. And then I'm adding some of the broth so that these are covered to about two-thirds of their height. Making sure that it goes everywhere. It's a little more. Okay, and now I will cover it. If you have a casserole with a lid that can go into the oven, that would be the better choice. I don't have that, so I have to use aluminum foil. And this goes into the oven for 20 minutes. After 20 minutes, I will remove the aluminum foil and then just bake it for another 15 minutes without the foil. And here is the result. So you can see there's not much of the liquid left and I'm just sprinkling this a little bit with some parsley just to make it look nice. And this can now be served with a side salad for example. It's a dish on its own, it's not a side dish. Um, you can fill it with other things, like you can add some ground beef to the filling or something like that. But this is the regular recipe for Krautkrapfen. And I hope you like this video. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being part of my German recipes and the German food community. Like always, you will find the link to the recipe at the very end of this video. Thank you for watching and I hope you will tune in next Saturday at 12.30 CST to watch my next video.